This is a video on the uses of the subjunctive for Latin GCSE. Now I'm going to talk about the uses of the subjunctive rather than the meaning of a subjunctive and how you translate it because the meaning of a subjunctive is actually going to change depending on how it's being used and the other words around it. So actually when you see a Latin subjunctive, you, the first question you should really ask is why is this verb in the subjunctive, i.e. what use of the subjunctive is this? Now, if we have a quick look at back to the formation of the subjunctive, we see that the imperfect subjunctive uh, uses the first two principal parts to form it, and the pluperfect active is going to use the third principal part, and the pluperfect passive is going to use the fourth principal part, the supine or the PPP. Now, it's important to note that at GCSE, there is only imperfect and pluperfect subjunctives. Now, there are six uses of the subjunctive at Latin GCSE. There are purpose clauses, Indirect commands, result clauses, fearing clauses, cum clauses, and indirect questions. And a good way to remember this is the six-fingered subjunctive hand of Norfolk. Now, the first one we're going to look at is purpose clauses. Now, a purpose clause is obviously going to explain the purpose of an action, or why someone did something. So here, the juvenis ad urbem iwit ut fratrum widerat. So the young man went to the city in order to see his brother. So notice that a purpose clause using the subjunctive is going to be introduced by ut or ne if it's negative. It's only ever going to use the imperfect subjunctive and it could be translated as so that rather than in order to if the subject of the subjunctive is different from the main verb, i.e. for example, the man bought some food so that his slave might eat. The purpose of him buying his food was that he wanted his slave to eat. The second use of the subjunctive is an indirect command. An indirect command is a reported command. So rather than just using a imper an imperative, which is a direct command, this is a reported command. So pater puris imperavit ut tacarent. Tacarent is our subjunctive. The father ordered the boys to be quiet. Notice again that it's introduced by ut or ne if negative. But the way that you can tell that this isn't a purpose clause is because you've got a verb of ordering, like impero. Now, impero is followed by the dative, that's why pueris is dative. But notice that it can be other command verbs as well. So not just impero, but even things like rogo or hortor. Rogo meaning I ask, hortor I encourage, and oro I beg. So perhaps more polite ways of commanding, but still in Latin a, an indirect command. Notice that ubeo is not going to be used for an indirect command using the subjunctive, but will actually just be accusative plus infinitive. Again, this is only going to use the imperfect subjunctive. A third use of the subjunctive at GCSE is the result clause, i.e. somebody did something with the result that something else happened. So milites tam fortiter pugna werent ut hostes winkerent. The soldiers fought so bravely that they defeated the enemy. Notice again that ut is used, but this time though the negative isn't going to be ne, it's going to be ut dot 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 known with the subjunctive. And the thing that really gives a result clause away is the signpost word. Now, the signpost word is easy to recognise because we've got things like tam and tot and talis, tantus, adeo, ita, which all mean different things, but all signify a result clause. Notice again that it's only using the imperfect subjunctive. Fearing clause. Now, a fearing clause is obviously somebody expressing a fear that something will happen in the future. I we're teme bat ne kylum in caput cadret. The man was afraid that the sky would fall on his head. Now, this is going to be introduced by ne, or actually, if it's negative, ne dot 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 with known later on. Now, this is one of the very few occasions uh, in Latin where ne and known are going to appear again, um, appear together. Note that it's only going to use the imperfect subjunctive, but is actually always going to refer to a fear for the future, i.e. the man was afraid that the sky would, in the future, fall on his head. It, at GCSE, will always be introduced by part of Timeo. The fifth use is a cum clause. Now, cum you've met meaning uh, with the ablative meaning with, but cum here is most often going to mean when. Cum ad niset. Imperator dormiwit. When he had arrived, the general went to sleep. Now, obviously, it's going to be introduced by cum. It uses both the imperfect and the pluperfect subjunctive. Adwayniset is a pluperfect active infinitive. Now, cum can be translated as when, 
but also since and because, and actually very occasionally although as well. Now it is important, before you write down which one you think it is, to work out in terms of the context which one is going to make more sense. And the final use of the subjunctive is an indirect question. An indirect question, like an indirect command, is a reported question rather than a command. So, Mata Ragawit quid pua fe kisset. Mother asked what the boy had done, i.e. the original question was what did the boy do, but now it's reported, so the mother asked what the boy had done. It's going to be introduced by interrogative vocab, such as quid or quiz or cur or ubi, etc. All interrogative vocab that you should know from direct questions. It's also, like cum clause, it's going to use both the imperfect and pluperfect subjunctive. And it's not always going to be introduced by a questioning verb, which is what makes it slightly tricky. So in our example, we have regarwit, asked, but it could also be nuntio. So it could have been the mother announced what the boy had done. So although it's not explicitly clear that it is an indirect question in English, in Latin, although the question might only have been implied, Latin is still going to use an indirect question construction.